Hello and what is up? It's Fox0G here to give you a how-to on PvP for Warlock. What I'll be doing today will be showing you how to PvP with the demonology spec for Warlock. Alright, I'm just going to go over a few things here of the talents for the demonology spec. We got Dreadlash. When your dead stalkers charge into battle, their bite now attacks all targets within an 8 yard range and deals 25% more damage. This is going to be crucial because when we select this PvP talent over here, you can send them in directly and it will attack right away, dealing the most amount of damage. I normally take this over the demonic strength because I don't use the Felguard's Bellstorm that precisely and I feel like it doesn't do as much damage as you get from the Dreadstalker. Next on this line is Bile Scourge Bombers. It takes two shards, it's instant, but it's a 30 second cooldown. You tear open a portal to the nether above the target's location from which several Bell Scourge will pour out of and crash into the ground over 6 seconds, dealing 4,141 shadow damage to all enemies within an 8 yard range. This could be good in non-PVP, but since we are talking about a PVP and you are moving around a lot, this is not beneficial. Next slide we got here, what I chose is... Demonic Calling, Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt have a 20% chance to make your next Dreadstock cost one less Soul Shard and have no cast time. This is very good, especially in PvE. Um, like I said, we'll be going over the PvP talents, which will, there will be no cast time on the Dreadstalkers. The next line is Power Siphon. It's an instant cast, 30 second cooldown though. You instantly sacrifice up to two imps to generate two shards of demonic core. And what demonic core is, I believe it shows us. Demonic core right here. When your wild imps expand all of their energy, they ex explode or implode. You have a 10% chance to absorb their life essence, granting you a stack of demonic core. When you summon your Dreadstalker, it phase away. You have a 100% chance to absorb their essence, granting you a stack of demonic core. Demonic core reduces the, the cast time of each of the demon bolts by 100%, maximum of 4 stacks. This could be good, but you'll soon realize when you cast your dead, dead stalkers, they will die and get you those two uh, crucial uh, demon bolt stacks, which is right here. Next on the line is Doom. Doom is an insta cast 40 yard range. Um, effects, Im effects impending Doom upon the targets causing 23,204 shadow damage after 25 seconds. If Doom kills a target, there's a 5% chance, chance that it'll summon a Doom Guard to fight for you in the battle. This is not that good, just, be, just for the fact that it takes 25 seconds and I believe you can't cast it on more than one target. So in PvP, this will not be a good uh, attack. Just because you can outheal the shadow damage when it happens. And it's, a dot, it's not even a dot over time or a damage over time spec. 
you're just waiting for it to drop off at the 25 seconds. Next line, we have Demon Skin. Your Soul Leech Absorption now passively regenerates at the rate of 0.5 of maximum health every one second and may absorb up to 20 or 15% of your maximum health. And Soul Leech is right here. Soul Leech, all single targets done by, done by you and your minions grant you and your pets a, shattery, a shadowy shield that absorbs 8% of the damage dealt up to 15% maximum health. This is normally good just for the overall tankiness, especially since you do have your pet out all the time. So you are going to get going to regenerate health as as well as have that shield on you. So you're going to take less damage in PvP. Next, we have Burning Rush, which is an instant cast. It's a toggle on, toggle off. Increases your movement speed by 50%, also damaging you for 4% of your maximum health every second. Removing remove or movement impairing effects may not reduce you below your 100% movement speed and like it says last until cancelled this is not that good for pvp just because you're taking away your life and you are trying to benefit yourself from running back and forth or running away from the opponent when they're trying to slow you down. You can easily negate this by doing your portal, which is right here, your de demonic gate, which you'll cast at the beginning of every PvP uh, fight. Next on the line is Dark Impact. It's an instant cast with a one minute cooldown. It sacrifices 20% of your current health to give you a shield for 250 of the sacrifice 250 uh, percent of the of the sacri sorry of the sacrifice health for 20 seconds this is usable um when you're in a stun a snare or you are polymorphed you can use this um this might be good but you are sacrificing uh your current health so if you see a kidney come and you know you're gonna get uh smoke bombed or you you know you're gonna get uh, attacked focused you might want to take this and sacrifice that health to get you that big shield and negate a lot of your health and then you can pair it up with your health stone right after you are out and your healer will love you for this next line we have from the shadows cast uh, casting called the dreadstocks causes the target to take 20 percent additional fire flame damage from you for the next 12 seconds this can be good since your dread stocks are on a 20 second cooldown so it gives you eight second window where you're not you're not going to be doing that extra 20 percent damage but you got to realize that your number one casting ability to gain your soul shards is just a shadow damage so what that means is your your 20 percent additional shadow flame is coming from your demon bolt and your shadow fury the one i took was soul strike it's an insta cast with 10 uh 10 second cooldown and it generates one soul soul shard what it is is it commands your fell guard to strike into the soul of your enemies dealing 9859 shadow damage and that's great when you are stunned and you have or you are locked out and you have nothing to cast you can still use this since it is off of your pet next uh, next in that line we have summon valfine it costs one soul shard it's a 1.7 second cast and it's a 45 second cooldown what it is is it summons a Felfine to fight for you, or a Valfine to fight for you for next 15 seconds. This can be good, but I believe they nerfed it way back when, and it is not that crucial nowadays. It doesn't give you the DPS in 
PvP. Next line we're looking at is Dark Fury. It's a passive. It reduces your cooldown by 15 seconds on your Shadow Fury, and your Shadow Fury is your stun, your AoE stun. Next in the line is Mortal Coil. It's an instant cast for 20 yards and a 45 second cooldown. What it does it, is it horrifies your enemy into fleeing and incapacitating for three seconds and healing you for 20% of the, of the maximum health. And this is great because it doesn't DR, which is diminishing return off your fear or your stun. So it's another way to get a melee DPS off you or cancel a cast of another um, another mage or something like that. You can easily cast it at them to interrupt them because it is non, uh, it can't be interrupted. Uh, the only way that it could be interrupted is if it is reflected back to you. So it will always hit. This is great, especially when melee is on you. You can easily, and you are locked out, you can't use your fear. You can easily shoot this at them, healing yourself, and they will be running away. Then you can cast fear off them, or out, off the mortal coil. And that's when you start laying down your damage. Next is Demonic Circle. And then what Demonic Circle is, is it's half a second or 0.42 second cast. It's a 10 second cooldown. You summon De Demonic Circle for 15 minutes. You cast Demonic Circle to teleport to its location, removing all slow, or slow effects. Um, this is This can be good. If you cast it, it uh, cast it before going into battle, the only downfall I see with this is that you're not getting much of a CC effect, a crowd control effect, and you have no additional uh, no additional heal. So th that's why I go with the mortal coil, especially since if you're trying to focus kill a healer and everyone's pairing off their interrupts and cc and everything you can use a mortal coil for the last effect because damage cannot break a mortal coil next line we have is soul conduit every soul shard spent you every soul shard you spend has a 15 percent chance to be refunded this can be good since you are laying down a lot of Hand of Gul'dan, and it costs three souls or up to three uh three soul shard soul shards. This can be good, but you are not going to see a huge benefit with just this alone. Next, we're gonna look at is Inner Demons. Inner Demons is a passive. You passively gain. You passively. You passively summon. A wild imp to fight for you every 12 seconds you have a 10 percent chance to also summon an additional demon to fight for you for 15 seconds so what that is is every time you do cast uh hand of gul'dan it's going to it has a 10 percent chance to proc an additional demon so you, this is how you stack up all your um all your wild imps so that you can cast demonic tyrant next we have grim grimmore felguard cost one soul shard which is a it's an insta cast it's a two minute cooldown it summons a felguard who attacks the target for 17 seconds and deals 25% increased damage. This felt guard will also set the stun the enemy that, that you summon. So it could be it's greatly paired with your felt guard. You can have both up. Um, it is just a bigger version of your felt guard. 
it has beneficial effects, but then again, you have to look at the fact that it has a two minute cooldown. So you will see more DPS or more damage output with inner demons. Next line we go to is Sacrifice Souls. Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt deal 4% additional damage per demon you have summoned. This can be good since you are stacking up to around anywhere from 8 to 16 Wild Imps, plus your pet that you have currently out, which is the Felguard. Unless you spec it differently, which you can run a Succubus. But you're looking anywhere from two imps, two imps, plus your fell guard, all the way up to 17 if you have the correct um, cast time. So what you're looking at is 54% increased damage. Um, it is looking good, but at the same time, it only counts for Shadow Bolt and Demon Bolt when you're going to get most of your damage from the Wild Imps. And next on that slocket is Demonic Consumption. Your Demonic Tyrant now destroys and absorbs the remaining power of all your Wild Imps and empowers himself. This is great. This is the best, probably the best talent, especially when you're in PvP, when you have your 10 to 15 imps you want to be looking for that we want to be stacking it up and what it's going to do is going to increase its damage so good and we're going to be looking at this which is summon demonic tyrant it is a 1.7 second cast it's a one minute and five or 1.5 minute uh cooldown and it's just going to destroy and rip a, rip through all damage it is your main damage dealer once you can summon it anywhere's from 10 and above wild imps next on the line is nether portal now this or nether portal it's it, it costs one soul shard 2.1 second cast which is huge especially in pvp you are going to get kicked or interrupted and is a three minute cooldown and what it is it tears a portal into the twisting nether for 15 seconds every time you spend a soul shard you will have also command demons from another from nether to come out and fight for you this can be good i don't know what you're gonna pair it with but a 2.1 second or cast is going to be interrupted all the time unless you somehow get their kick or get their stun and use an ending resolve and get that cast out before you get stunned again since this is your like go-to uh what ending Unending resolve is is your it hardens and thickens your skin, uh, reducing damage you take by forty percent. As well as the main goal right or the main thing right here is it grants immunity from interruptions and silences. Great, absolute great ability. I can't see Nether Portal being a good thing, just for the fact that. It's a 2.1 second cooldown. You never know what you're going to get. And you're going to get a lot more damage from demonic consumption. And what we're going to look at is PvP talents. Nine times out of ten, you are going to go with Gladiator, Gladiator Medallion. It removes uh, movement and pairing effects as well as all crowd control effects. Everyone knows it, everyone uses it. Um, another one you can do is adaption. Um, removes loss control effect, duration of five or more. Um, this ability can happen, it can only happen once every minute, which can be good, but it also can be baited out. Um, another one is relentless, reducing all CC effects by 20%. It's not that good. Um, 
yes, your furies get reduced, the the DR is quicker and everything like that, but it's just you're still sitting that stun, you don't know how to get out. Alright, next on the docket. We're just gonna go over the other PvP talents. We got Singed Magic, which is an insta cast, 15 seconds. Um Command your summon imp to remove all harmful effects from their targets, granting 3%, uh, but, but deals 3% of their total damage or total health and fire damage. Your imps must be your current pepper, uh, pet alive. So you're going to be having the imp up. It's not that good. It doesn't provide you any CC. I'll tell you why we go Felguard. Um, next on the docket is uh, Pleasure Through Pain. While your succubus is alive, your fifteen, your shadow damage is increased by fifteen percent. Your cast time of your shadow bolt is reduced by five per, or five point five of a second, which can be good. Um, the succubus does have good abilities. It does have whiplash which will reduce the enemy's speed by 50 percent um another great one is seduction seduction will disorient a, a person for 30 seconds so you can just dis, um disorient kind of like a blind on the healer when you're focusing a dps or vice versa next one is fell lord uh fell lord it's a it costs two soul shards, and it's an instant cast. It's up every minute and a half. And what fell, uh, Call of the Fell Lord is, it summons a Fell Lord to guard a location for 15 seconds. Any enemy that comes in six yards will suffer 5% of their maximum health damage, and the players that players struck will be stunned for a second. This can be great um, when you're against a double melee, and they're just focusing you. You can drop that down on you as well as you can throw your Shadow Fury out as soon as it comes down and stuns them in there up to or for three seconds and your Fell Lord is just going to lay into them. Next we have is Master Summoner. Call your, Dreadstock, uh, call your Dreadstock is now an instant cast. Like I said before, this is crucial because... When you come out, you are just going to cast your Dreadstock as well as your Soul Strike to gain those uh, Soul Shard. As well as when the de Dreadstocks do die, you get the Demonic Core stack, which does give you the free cast for Demon Bolt. And Demon Bolt gives you two Soul Shards. I'll show you how this works and what it means. Or I'll show you how it works and what we're going to do in a pvp scenario uh next you have curse of fragility which is an insta cast you can cast it wherever it's 45 seconds it reduces the target's main or target's maximum health by up to 15 percent for 10 seconds this can be good when you are uh when you are calling a kill target you can drop their health by 15 percent which is kind of big since you are looking at around 400 or 427 thousand health and up it can drop it down by quite a bit next is curse of tongues instacast 15 second cooldown what it does is forces the target to speak in demonic increasing the cast the casting time of all spells by 30% for 10 seconds. This might be good in other scenarios, um, but I can see how it might work if you are constantly getting those procs off your uh, demonic core, which gives you those instant free cast of demon bolt. So you're casting demon bolt, you get two, three, or four soul shards, you want to spend your hand of Gul'dan, and it just kind of keeps on going quicker and ramping up for your wild imps so that you can use the demonic tyrant. It can work. Next, we're going on to Curse of the Weakness. 
It's an instant cast, 20 second cooldown. It reduces the uh, target's attack power by 30% for 10 seconds. And that is attack power. So you're looking at melee when you are running this. If you throw it on another warlock, it's not going to do anything for them. They're still going to be able to hit you at highest cost or high highest damage. Next is Essent Drain. Whenever you heal yourself with Drain Life, the enemy target the enemy target deals five percent reduced damage to you for six seconds, stacking up to five times. So this can be used, but I don't see it used that frequently since Drain Life is no longer meta and no longer deals a bajillion damage next we have is casting circle 0.4 of a second cast uh minute cooldown so it, ca it summons a casting circle for eight seconds well within the casting circle you are immune to silences and interrupts uh learning casting circle causes no uh causes unending resolve to no longer grant immunity or uh, silences and interrupts. So this can be good. It does not replace unending resolve. Um, it's great to stand in that circle. You you're not gonna get the forty percent, uh, forty percent reduced damage. But on the plus side, it's up every minute. And within that 8 seconds, which is the same 8 seconds that you would get from Undernic Resolve, which is a 3 minute cooldown, you'll be getting 8 seconds of un uninterrupting um, casting time. Next, which I picked, is uh, Call Fell Hunter. Um, it's an instacast every 24 seconds. Uh, invoke the power of a Fell Hunter from the Nether to instantly spell lock the enemy target uh fell hunter cannot be used with the current pet fell hunter um spell what spell lock is spell lock counters the enemy's spell cast preventing an enemy spell from that school of being cast for six seconds so it's like your kick it's like your interrupt um next we have is called the observer I normally run this one just for the fact that you do have some high hitting uh, uh, fights, especially with Havoc, the Demon Hunter Havoc spec, when it goes up in the air and drops its apples. I forget what that ability is called. Um, Call of the Observer, Instacast, 1.5 minute cooldown. Um, Summons a demonic observer to watch watchful eye over the area for 20 seconds. Each time an enemy within 20 yards casts a harmful spell, the observer will deal 5% of the tur uh, of the target's maximum health in shadow damage. This is great, especially against an unholy death knight, because he is going to cast all of his minions on you, and he's just going to get chunked. Or the uh, minions are just going to be chunk get chunked. This is great. Next we have is Nether Ward. Now, as you can see, I have four check marks. Um, Nether Ward is granted by my heart, as you can see below. Uh, Nether Ward is an insta cast, forty five second cooldown. Surrounds the caster in a shield that lasts three seconds, reflecting all harmful spells cast on you. I love running against this or er, running this against. Uh, fire mages, especially against um, Destro warlocks, when they're casting greater fire or greater fire pyroblast or chaos bolt, and it's coming towards me before the cast is off. I make sure I hit this, and that chaos bolt or greater pyroblast is bouncing off me and hitting them. And this is when I just line up my damage and just see their health drop. That's it for now. This is only this is part one of part two or three of how I'm going 
to show you. Uh, next part, I am going to show you how to do the rotation for uh, the demonology spec. I'm going to go through it step by step, walk you through it, show you how to time everything, uh, show you what my UI is about as well. Um, then the follow up one, uh, session three, is going to be me in the PvP realm. All right, thank you here. If you like this video or you like more of these videos, I will be doing more. I got a couple other specs that I do play. Um, just follow me on Twitch. I am live occasionally. I'm trying to get in more of a, a, a rhythm with that, as well as uh, you'll check more of these videos on YouTube. And see you next time.